Good afternoon to everybody. You you saw in uh, in this uh, video the main uh, feature of the of the mission that we have here in Greece. I think the overall, as the as the pictures were showing, I think is a is a positive picture at least now that we have here in Greece. Although I would say that we are now you know all looking far east in Afghanistan of what is happening and there is a bit of concern of what uh, what can uh, the impact that what is happening there can have on the situation in Greece why i say that is positive because if you look back at when the 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 crisis the peak of the crisis happened with uh, a lot of uh, Syrians Syrian migrants that were approaching through Turkey, the, the, the borders of Europe and Greece in 2015, uh, the situation has, has drastically improved. At the beginning, you know, we had uh, like, like 40 plus uh, open camps. Uh, facilities in the in the um, in the islands where the majority of the people were arriving, they were under stress, uh, overcrowded. It was very difficult to keep also standards. If you look at the situation now, uh, as you saw in the in the in the pictures, we have now 28 centers. They are operating. The situation in the islands is very uh, calm, I would say. We have uh, a total of approximately 6,000 people that are, are uh, hosted there. And, uh, and uh, the standards in the camp have, uh, have drastically improved, you know. While at the beginning of the crisis, we were focusing mainly on, uh, you know, humanitarian assistance. So the basic support, shelter, food, uh, water. Now, uh, over the years, together with the Greek government, we have developed a system that is looking at protection issues, is looking at the rights of the of the of the of the migrants, the possibility of going a bit beyond the 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 pure the pure emergency. Uh, the situation, I would say, is uh, is at the moment to a point where. Uh, also, the government is taking more control of uh, of the camps. You know, at the emergency time, there was a very heavy involvement of IOM, other UN agencies, and NGOs. While now, you know, the, the situation is a bit more more uh, under control. I would say there is a transition from a sort of emergency situation to a more uh, standard way of managing migration that is what you have uh, in, in, in all the EU member states. So I will say that in this, in this process of, uh, of handing over, now it, it comes very, the very disturbing images that we saw in, uh, in, uh, on TV coming from Afghanistan and knowing that, that this is one of the main entry points uh, to Europe, this, this as, as I said before, is creating some, uh, some issues. Uh, also consider that, uh, you know, lately, while at the beginning of the crisis and for a few years uh, after, the majority of the migrants that were approaching uh, Greece uh, were coming from Syria. Lately, the number of Afghan nationals has drastically increased. At the moment, if you look, and, uh, and uh, I refer only to the statistics coming from the, the, the open camps in the mainland uh, that are managed by the government together with IOM directly, the 28 camps. But this gives you an idea on overall population hosted in, in Greece. 50%, uh, half of the caseload that is in, uh, hosted in these camps are coming from, uh, from Afghanistan. And uh, at the same time, you have... 20% of Syrian nationals. So this gives you a, a, an idea on why for us is, is very important to look at, uh, at what is happening in, uh, in, uh, in Afghanistan. 
One issue where uh, I think significantly progress has been made in Greece was the issue of unaccompanied children. Unaccompanied children have been, uh, you know, apart from the from the, the vulnerability of this particular target group, has been one of the major major uh, areas of concern. I would say in the in the initial period after the crisis in or during the crisis in 2015, with uh, many of uh, these uh, children that were. They were uh, stranded, were not uh, given support in in proper facilities. Now, I will say that as we 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 talk now, there is a system in Greece for dealing with unaccompanied children. A network of shelters has been has been set up and is managed mainly by Greek NGOs. And there is a system also for referral. Uh, immediate referral from the Greek authorities to these uh, shelters to avoid the many of these uh, of these children will remain in uh, in camps in the islands or in places where they cannot uh, receive proper proper support and proper accommodation. So again, a lot of progress has been made there. Uh, as you know, uh, this is a very complicated issue because the majority of the unaccompanied children that are coming at least to Greece are very close to, to becoming uh, adults. So uh, we are talking of a, 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 a large number of the of the 3,000 plus uh, uh, children that are estimated now to be in Greece. Uh, being of the age of 16, 17. This is creating issues on, uh, on the type of support that needs to be given, but also creating issues on uh, what to do with this, uh, with this uh, particular vulnerable group when on, uh, uh, they, they reach the, the 18 years of age. Because, uh, you know, what is, what is a, a, a formal age doesn't, doesn't particularly uh, mean that the person is fully fully uh, capable to or responsible to do things by, by, by himself or herself. So in this sense, again, now that the situation is more under control and the authorities have set up a, a, a system, a mechanism to deal with this, uh, with this particular group, uh, the authorities together with IOM are thinking to go a further step and to try to set up particular uh, programs that will deal with the unaccompanied children at least for a year or two after they become adults. So to try to, to, to continue the support uh, even, even after the, the 18 years uh, of, uh, of age. Uh, one thing that, uh, that certainly uh, proved to be very effective throughout the, the, um, the management of the crisis and the management of the migration in, in Greece uh, was the setting up of the relocation program. The relocation among the EU member states was, I think, crucial in 2018-2019 to uh, ease the burden on the Greek authorities to uh, process asylum cases, but also to, to host them uh, within the, the, the facilities that were, that were created. Uh, through the, the, the relocation mechanism that was implemented by, by IOM with the funding of the European Union, uh, 2, 000, more than 20,000 uh, uh, people were moved to other, to other countries. And this, uh, apart from the consideration of a, a, a need of solidarity when dealing with migration issues inside the, the EU uh, or other uh, political consideration, operationally was a key factor 
in allowing the Greek authorities to uh, further develop their reception system. It was very difficult at that time with, uh, with peaks of 10,000 people coming every day to, 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 to set up a system that uh, before, before 2015 in Greece was, was very, very basic. So I will say that uh, that in that sense, you know, there was a sort of uh, of uh, enormous job that was done by the, the the Greek authorities in trying to set up a system for managing these very high uh, migration flows that they were receiving, and of course with the support of the European Union and uh, and. Uh, international organizations like like IOM but there was also a support or it was key in this development the the the, the solidarity that came from other EU member states uh, mainly through the, the the mandatory relocation but also through other other type of uh, of support uh, one last uh, last consideration for me on how the system has developed in Greece and how Greece was able to, to, to move from an emergency to a more a more stable uh, way of managing managing uh, migration flows is the, um, the example of the of the integration. Uh, in spite of uh, of uh, you know what uh, what you can read on the on the newspapers or or uh, or what comes very known outside Greece, Greece has set up in these years, and particularly starting from uh, 2019, a mechanism for uh, facilitating the integration of the recognized refugees in uh, in Greece. Consider that before 2019, Greece uh, didn't have any any mechanism for uh, for this. So it was it was an effort that was done by the authorities on an issue that is not uh, very very easy to deal with. You know very well how public opinions are also playing on this issue in uh, in uh, within the European Union, and this mechanism is working in trying to uh, provide uh, language courses, but also access to, to, to work and, uh, and access to information on, uh, on how to, 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 to establish uh, their, their future life in Greece to uh, a very large number of, uh, of uh, migrants that have received uh, refugee status in, in Greece. You know very well that uh, in Greece, a very large number of, uh, apart from the Syrian uh, nationals, but also uh, the rate of, uh, of approval or recognition for uh, Afghani nationals has always been very, very high or higher than in other member states. So through this mechanism, I think that, uh, that uh, Greece has been able to set up a basic system for uh, looking at migration management as a whole. So the reception, the emergency assistance, and ending with the, the, the integration for those that have the right to stay. Uh, obviously, you know, as part of this, of this um, system for, for managing migration, there is also the voluntary return that in Greece has always had a, 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 a very uh, positive response uh, the, the, the program of voluntary return in Greece as, uh, is one of the largest in, uh, in Europe in terms of people that want, it, want to, to, to return to their own, to their own country. And, uh, and throughout the, the, the emergency, we always had a, a, a number of, uh, of uh, applicants uh, even during the COVID, uh, the, the, the numbers were, were more or less stable, uh, showing that uh, mm, this is a very 
uh, useful tool that allows those that have the, the, the intention to return and the genuine willingness to return to, to, to do so. So I will say that uh, as I as I said when I when I started this this short uh, presentation, the picture is quite uh, is quite positive at the moment. Uh, I think that what what uh, has happened in uh, in in Greece over the past uh, three four years is uh, we cannot say is is is. Is a model because you know you always learn by doing things, especially on migration and when you deal with with individual people, it's always difficult to set up models and schemes. But uh, certainly there are positive elements that can be taken as a, as a lesson learned, and uh, um, unfortunately now you know. We, we, we wait and see what, uh, what will happen and how this will have an impact on a, a system that is shaping itself. Uh, thank you.